Hey everyone, so it's Alex here and I'm here with Liam and we're going to be doing a bit of an interview today and talking about Liam's experience of living and teaching English in Vietnam. So welcome to the video. Yeah, thanks for having me. Let's start off with, I guess, where you were before you came out to Vietnam. Maybe just tell us what you're doing and then maybe a bit about your decision or why you decided to come out here. Sure. So I studied film and theater at university. Um, great course, really enjoyed it. Um, got a good job afterwards, but had always really wanted to travel basically and had heard about different, um, had heard about teaching English through different people. Uh, we mentioned this before in a, in a conversation we had earlier, but I like when things kind of pop up in different places um, and yeah I heard about this this thing like TEFL teaching English which was uh, very new to me uh, various different various different points so I decided to look into it a little bit more um, and then yeah I came across a guy called Joseph Joseph Campbell and uh, he he has something an idea that he calls the hero's journey um, and the hero's journey involves being in, a, in an ordinary world and then something calls you on an adventure um, to, go, to go somewhere new and I like that idea and it seemed to fit well with travel um, so that kind of clicked into place for me and I thought a perfect way to change this kind of um, situation so I had a good job and then after, after that job I kind of was just working um, in a few different jobs um, so yeah, this idea, this, this notion of kind of leaving your, your, your home country to move somewhere else really appealed to me. And then uh, after doing a bit of research and looking into Vietnam and having known a few people that, that had come out here, I decided to, to opt for Vietnam. Nice. So that call to adventure, I guess Vietnam appealed to you in a few different ways when you researched it. So what was it about Vietnam that made you want to come here specifically? Yeah, I'd be lying if I said it wasn't just, if a big part of it wasn't the, um, the living costs and the pay ratio. I definitely did quite a bit of research into where would be the best place to, um, to earn a living and to, and to work with regards to uh, how much you get paid and how much things cost. Because before moving to Vietnam, similarly to yourself, I had the idea, or I have the idea of kind of doing a, a podcast or a, or a kind of YouTube channel kind of thing, similar to yourself. Um, so I wanted somewhere where I might be able to have a bit of free time to, um, to pursue things that I was interested in, whether that was uh, learning new skills, like learning how to edit and film, um, or whether it was just to read different things. So Vietnam seemed like it had uh, a good balance of, of uh, free time and and work. Yeah, I think that's one of the most common reasons why people come out here, among other things, is that ability to not only work um, an amount that allows you to have free time, but also make enough so that you can live really well and save money each month that you can put towards something and uh, you know use that time and, and that extra money to, to do all sorts of things like travel or start some kind of side project and uh, if you guys want to check out Liam's podcast and YouTube channel I'll just plug it right here in the beginning because it's new but I think that um, he's putting a lot of effort into it right now so uh, looking forward to seeing more of your your guests that's called mm -hmm. call to Vietnam call to uh, Vietnam yeah, yeah which is a play on the idea of a, a call to adventure when it comes to Vietnam um, obviously a lot of people have different experiences when they arrive here and they, they first get here and a lot of things can be quite overwhelming so what was your experience like when you first arrived here were you excited or were you kind of stressed out or was it a combination i loved it to be honest um i was worried about those things i think everybody gets concerned about moving to a, a new place um, but that the kind of homesickness or the culture shock really didn't hit in till about two or three weeks 
into getting here, my first impressions were, wow, this place is, this place is really exciting. Um, so I think to start off with, I was really, 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 really excited by the colors, the smells, the noises. Um, and I arrived in, in Boy Vienne. <laughs> it was the first place I arrived. I think that must be the kind of avenue through which lots of people come into Ho Chi Minh City. Um, but then after that, moved out to Govap, where I did my uh, TESOL course. And uh, for anyone that doesn't know, Boy Vienne is kind of the backpacker touristy street, which is quite hectic in a lot of ways, but uh, also can be quite fun too. So now the TESOL course, uh, is actually the one that we offer through Ninja Teacher. If you go to our website, you can check it out. And, uh, you know, that's a, a good way to get started teaching because if you come out here, you have to learn how to teach English because just because you, you speak it doesn't mean you can actually teach it. So how did you find the TESOL course and did it prepare you well for actually teaching out here? Sure, yeah. Um I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed the course. Um, a lot of that was to do with the, the social aspects of things as well, because you're you're in a group with maybe 30 other people from all over the world, um, and it was uh, yeah, it was weird to be back in the back in the classroom again after after 10 years or so. Um, but no, I enjoyed the course, and I think it, it prepared me. Well, it depends how in relation to into what into what kind of job that you go into and the job that i went into immediately after in queen yan was with a school that wasn't very well organized so a lot of stuff was just left up to us um so i think the course yeah it gave me it gave me lots of things to fall back on in that in that respect because when we arrived at the at the school that we worked at in queen yan the there was a, a real absence of, of management at all really the I think they were expecting teachers just to come into not only to know how to teach but also to design a course hmm. um, so that was a real struggle with the first job that we had um, but no the experience of uh, of learning the TESOL in Ho Chi Minh City um, all round was was a fun one partly because I met my girlfriend who I'm who I'm now with and we've been together for 18 years she's from Canada so it's hard to look back on my experience of, of uh, teaching, uh, of learning the TESOL without thinking about that because it's like, it's, right. where I, it's where I met the person that I'm in love with at the moment. So it's kind of, it's completely coupled with that. Right. Um, so it's all a bit of a, a, bit of a blur. <laughs> 18 months though, right? Not 18 years. 18 months. Did I say yeah. 18 years? I, I think so. <laughs> she, she may be happy to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, I think that's a big thing that a lot of people say too, is, is the support system of like meeting a lot of people, making friends, maybe meeting someone like that. Uh, I'd be interested to see how many people that came through us have actually uh, got together with someone on on the course. And it must happen, yeah. yeah. And, and friends as well, I think. Two or three nights ago, I was out with uh, with some of the friends that I met on that course. So there's there's still a few of us that have stayed in touch after after 18 months. Nice. Um, and uh, yeah, that's even after having moved to Quignon for a whole year. Um, so yeah, can highly highly recommend it. I think that's one thing you pointed out with that school that is actually probably an issue that isn't brought up that much in circles about teaching English in Vietnam. It is a very fast developing market and there's schools popping up all over the place. Uh, there are a lot of job opportunities, but there's a lot of schools that are a little bit uh, disorganized to say the least and, mm. and some that may even border on you know, dishonest and, and not really paying teachers well uh, or on time perhaps. And I think that's something that you, you should look out for. So do you have any tips for someone that's going into the job market looking for a job? Do you know any ways to kind of spot if that's happening or not? Or do you think it's just a matter of intuition? Yeah, um, I mean, look them up online. It sounds like such a, such a basic one. And I know lots of developing centers maybe don't have much of an online presence, but it was through looking up this one particular school, which I'm not gonna name and shame, 
But um, it was through looking them up online that we started to ask questions about the legitimacy of, of what they were claiming. Um, so yeah, do your research. There's lots of forums, lots of great Facebook forums where you can ask um, fellow teachers what their, what their experiences are. And uh, there's, there's, yeah, there's lots of feedback on different things like that. But I'm really happy with the center that I'm at just now. Um, they're very professional. They're just, they're expanding in, in Ho Chi Minh City just now. And I've had nothing but, but good things to say about them. So, yeah, I think there definitely are a lot of companies that are really doing well in, with regard to offering professional services for, for the students and then also treating their teachers well. And I think Vietnam's moving more and more in that direction. So that's a good thing. Um, so yeah, just with regards to the teaching, how have you enjoyed it? Uh, do you actually enjoy the teaching or do you just find it like a job that you, you do while you're working on other stuff that you enjoy? Oh, not at all. Maybe I gave that impression because the first thing I talked about was was the uh, the pay and the living costs. But I mean, it is something you do think about, obviously. You want to be able to to um, to survive and to maybe to live well. So it is, it is on a lot of people's mind. But no, the teaching... The teaching is amazing. Um, I think kids are, especially here, they've got so much energy and they're they're really um, they're just really good fun. Like I, I go into class and kind of just have a bit of banter with the with the children and um, and then especially in Queen Yan when, so as I mentioned, the school that we worked for was uh, was really developing. It was it was kind of new when we first got there which had pros and cons and one of the pros was that you kind of had a lot of input onto um onto the education of the of the children so especially with the kind of grade ones the five and the six year olds watching them come from not being able to speak any english at all and not only that sometimes like standing at the at the entrance to the classroom like terrified because they've never because it's a small ish city queen Yan, um so some of them had never seen a foreign teacher before and were just really nervous and like terrified. Who's this big, tall, ugly white guy? <laughs> um, and didn't want to come into the classroom. So watching, and then by the end of it, they were like, they got upset when class was, if class was ever canceled or if class wasn't on. It became a really big part of their lives, learning English and, and coming to school. So um, watching that development from a kid that's, too scared to come into the classroom, to holding their own in a short conversation and also just being really keen to come and learn is uh, yeah, very rewarding indeed. That's really interesting that you said that because one of my personal opinions that is, I think something that people don't really consider is that you coming out here as a, a Westerner is not only improving the education by actually teaching, which of course you do if uh, if you're a good teacher, you know, I think you can practice and, and learn and become a better teacher. But also you're helping these kids to become less scared of uh, someone who's a foreigner because we're living in a global world now where there's a lot of international business, there's people, you know, traveling uh, between countries, maybe they want to study abroad. Lots of parents in Vietnam want their kids to study abroad. And if they're terrified of uh, a foreigner, then that's not going to put them in a good position. So actually by being here as a foreign English teacher, you're exposing them to Western culture and you know yourself and, and just being there as a, a person that they can get used to. And then obviously the, the younger kids to kind of absorb English very quickly. So if they learn from a native English speaker or someone who speaks English fluently, uh, their English is going to improve drastically by ha having a foreign English teacher. Sure. And I think that's, that's a really important point when it comes to like your attitudes towards the teaching as well. I think uh, I've never, I've never met any of them, but apparently like there's, there's people that just come out here without TESOLs or without degrees and just, uh, and just kind of, half arse it a little bit and don't really give it their all. I think it's really important, like this might sound a bit cheesy, but you're you're an ambassador for the country that you're coming from or just from the West in general. So it's important that that when you're that you're serious about the teaching and that you uh, 
but you give it the level of seriousness that it deserves because you're imprinting on these impressionable children an idea of what people from the West are like. So I hate when I come on onto Facebook or come onto something and you see like, some backpacker like doing something that just uh, kind of gives the rest of us a bad name, I guess. So I've been living here for a while and whenever I see that, you know, just kind of cringe. Um, and it's also... It's education, you know, it's the future of these children that are in your hands. So you should take it seriously. If you're passionate and bring that passion to the classroom, it doesn't matter that you aren't a qualified teacher back home and have a four year teaching degree because you can learn how to teach English uh, through a relatively short course and then, you know, improve as you go along as a teacher. And I don't know about you, but we've all had, well, I personally have had different teachers along the, along the way that have had big, big impacts on me, um, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to go into teaching, because sometimes when you're at school, at high school anyway, like the very act of learning is like sucked out of, yeah. out of the school environment. Yeah. Uh, not so much at university, but definitely at high school. It's, the, it's something that you, that you have to do rather than something that you, that you want to be there doing. So, um, yeah, well, I had one or two teachers at high school that just kind of like really clicked with me. One of them was an English teacher, actually. Uh, English literature, not, not English language. And my dad's a lecturer as well. So teaching is definitely something that's been in my life. Um, I think it'll continue to be a part of my life because uh, yeah, teaching happens not just in the classroom environment, but in, in all walks of life, for sure. Oh, yeah. The world is changing with technology and the online space now what we're doing now is is education you know there's people watching this and they're learning um so it's it's really exciting to see what can be done in that space so how long do you think you're actually going to be teaching english here for a while yeah i think i'll always be teaching in some in some regard it may not always be strictly classroom teaching but i like that point that you make about this being teaching about um yeah, the world is the world really is changing in terms of technology and where you get your information from. And there's online there's a a real community of people that that um that are teaching for free or that, that put things out there and ask for a donation or or have uh, Skillshare accounts. Um so yeah, I'm I'm gonna give this, this podcast thing a go, see what happens with that. And I would love to eventually set up some kind of system where I'm teaching those skills alongside English to to Vietnamese kids or to, to other kids in Southeast Asia. So for the foreseeable future, I'll be teaching English. Um, I don't think I can give up the day job yet, but but at some point I would love to be able to take the, the media side of things and combine that with English language learning in some kind of way. It's, it's a vague idea in the back of my head at the moment, so it's, I don't have any concrete plans. But um, yeah, if I could find some way of combining media and English language learning, that's something I, that's a, a distant goal for me. Yeah, that's really cool. And I think that's going to happen more and more different types of learning and different platforms for learning. You know, online teaching now is becoming quite popular. And uh, yeah, combining different different things like you said could be really interesting so in terms of living here in Ho Chi Minh City and also out in the provinces how have you found living in the city versus out there so Queen Yan is beautiful really really nice um, really nice city um, but really quiet although I think it's becoming more and more known about now but when we were there there was like maybe between 10 and 11 expats that we kind of knew well hmm. probably more actually that we didn't actually know yeah so we moved to Ho Chi Minh City because it was uh, it was getting a bit quiet there but then we got to Ho Chi Minh City and now we're like geez a bit loud and a bit, <laughs> a bit polluted here so other than the the pollution and the kind of like chaos of it all I do I do like Ho Chi Minh City um, it's got all the things that you need and the people Sorry, I should speak more about the people in Queen Yan because I've got lots of uh, Vietnamese friends there. Um, but just generally, I think Vietnamese people are very welcoming, um, and I, I, uh, I definitely noticed that in in Queen Yan. Like, 
the parents of different um, different students would welcome us into into their homes or take us out for dinner or take us out for coffee. Um, so that that helped make it more livable, and that's something we've not really experienced yet in Ho Chi Minh City. Not because not because people aren't like that here, but because we live in an apartment block and we we don't do enough to try and uh, to integrate ourselves. Nice. I've noticed that when you go out of the big cities too, people are extra friendly. Uh, I've found that. And that's a beachside town, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, yeah just south of Da Nang. Beautiful, big, long beach. Um, yeah. And I think it's... It seems to be that there's more and more people going there to teach English. I definitely think there's opportunities there. Yeah, just in general, all the smaller cities and towns and stuff, more and more opportunities are opening up. So if you want to come to Vietnam, you don't have to go to the big cities necessarily. You know, it might be a good place to start and then move out there or, or vice versa. Um, but I think that it, you're not limited to, to living here, which is quite nice. So you said that you're planning to stay here for a while to carry on teaching English and working on your podcast. So what are the plans for the podcast and what do you want to achieve with that? So it's very much um, a passion project at the moment. Don't have uh, any concrete goals. Just looking to speak to as many different people from as many different backgrounds as possible. Uh, the first three episodes were with English teachers. And then the episode after that was with um, a guy, Jason, who runs the Saigon Craft Beer Tour Company. He does, he does tours around Ho Chi Minh City. Yeah, that was a really interesting podcast. Um, and podcast with yourself that we did just before this was good as well. So collecting conversations, if you will, like speaking to different people and, and, uh, and having interesting conversations. Um, so yeah, if anybody is in Ho Chi Minh City and would like to, to talk about a project that they're working on or something that they're doing, then, then get in touch. Uh, they can find me at, my website is calltovietnam.org. Um, I'm on Facebook, or Call to Vietnam is on Facebook. Um, you can find me on Instagram, L-I-A-M-B-A-R-T-I-E, Liam Barty. Uh, and my YouTube is the same. I'll link to it below so you guys can go check it out. And okay. we'll also have an interview. Uh, of you. you interviewed me, so you can check that out there. Yeah. And yeah, just to wrap up, what would you suggest to someone who's thinking about coming out to Vietnam and uh, on the fence, not 100% sure if that's what they want to do and still considering it. And we actually talked about this on your video as well. Uh, but what would you suggest? Um, so similarly to you, I would say you've got to do it. But obviously that's biased from my own experiences, which have been really positive with this beautiful country that's filled with really wonderful people. Um, the Vietnamese are lovely. It's a really great place to live. They're really welcoming. Um, the students are great. They're very keen to learn. Um, so yeah, I, if, if you're watching this and there's anything that's inside you just now that's... Uh, I had a friend before that referred to it as a tickle. If there's something that's tickling you, like I, I kind of... Just a little something that's, that's caught your attention and you're remotely interested in it, then yeah, give it more attention, like research it, start to look into it a little bit more. But it is, it's a really wonderful thing to do. It's a really wonderful thing to experience uh, another culture. Um, the, the profession of teaching is, is a wonderful one, very, very rewarding. Um, so yeah, just, just go for it really. Great. Well, thanks for being in the video and I'll chat to you soon. Okay. Cheers. Thank you.